Hi everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Dr. Ray and I'm a small animal practitioner. And on this channel, um, I like to answer your questions, which generally are about food. I also like to show you guys uh, interesting things I see in my daily practice. Today, I wanted to do a review uh, specifically from a question that I received from a client in my general practice. And so it wasn't presented by you guys, but it was still a good question. And I think I had some good dialogue back and forth with the owner. And so I thought I'd share that with you because it was information she said um, she didn't know. So let's do that today. All right. Okay, so the food was called Smalls. Shut up! You're killing me, Smalls. I had never heard of it before. That is not uncommon. There are lots of pet food companies out there. And so I went ahead and did a review for this client. Um, the question she had was, she's feeding her cats um, a regular diet, a regular store diet. She just wanted to do something better. She thought, is there something better that I can do? And is this food gonna be something better than what I'm already feeding? Really common question, great question. Wanted to do the best for her pet. And so um, Smalls has a really nice website. It's really cool. I think they do um, predominantly cats. Uh, I'm not sure that they do dogs. So this is going to be a cat food review, which is nice because I haven't done very many of these. Um, and so what you do is you click get started and it'll bring up a series of questions that are kind of fun to answer and you go through them and then it will tell you what foods they offer that are going to fit your needs based on these questions. And so um, it asks us to uh, tell us some information so that they can build the healthiest smalls box for your pet and your wallet. And so you click get, get started and uh, she has one cat and I'm not gonna put the real name of the cat here but we'll just say uh, the cat's name is Kitty. And what does Kitty eat? Well, you can just, I just, you can just click everything. I just clicked everything, wanted to see what they had to offer. Um, when it comes to cat nutrition, where do you stand? Um, and so the first thing when I went through these prompts, I clicked was I spare no expense. Um, this particular cat was a male say 36 months old which is about three years and he was neutered so they're looking for age specific food um, and it says that smalls is a great option for cats of all ages um, just like an especially healthy well-rounded human meal would be good for any human of any age that right there to me is saying this is going to be in all life stages. We would have to dive into the AFCO statement to know specifically if that is what they're saying. But it sounds like they are justifying being all life stages, which we know is a cop out uh, for their food. This is nice. It's asking, is your cat extra cuddly, which I'm assuming means a little bit on the fluffy side. Is your cat average or is your cat slender? So we're going to say average. Then it goes on to say, Smalls is a great option for all cats. Doesn't matter what you picked. If they were slender, or are they extra cuddly? Um, our recipes are high protein and not carb loaded with plenty of empty calories like kibble. So it's saying that kibble is carb lo loaded and full of empty calories. Cats stay satisfied for longer while getting all the nutrients they need to maintain healthy weight. What flavors, um, what are the flavors your cat won't eat? we'll leave them out we're not going to click any because we're just going to assume this cat likes everything all right and so then it has tailored for us a couple meal plan options i will spare you guys the details i went through and i selected various combinations of prompts and it pretty much always brings you um, back to these options so you can play with it and see what you guys get but pretty much you always come back to these options um the first thing I looked into was the 50-50 because with the 50-50 they're saying that they originally are saying okay well we don't want to do all the extra carbs and all that stuff that's in kibble kibble's bad but then in the 50-50 they're giving you an option that includes kibble so that's a little bit counterproductive there so I went down further and I started clicking on a little bit of the prompts the first thing that it says is you would get two bags of a freeze dried food if you wanna check out our last video regarding freeze drying and freeze dried raw specifically, because this is a freeze dried raw meal. Freeze dried basically is a marketing ploy and we'll take a little brief 
divergence here in a minute to talk about what's good marketing and what's bad marketing but freeze dried raw is a marketing ploy it is a process where they use freeze drying to basically suck the moisture out of food so that it is hard but it doesn't have anything to do with or doesn't contribute to any type of sterilization or bacterial uh, protection so when you freeze dry food it has just as much bacteria as a raw food would have it's just the moisture has been taken out so as soon as the moisture um, you open that bag and the moisture gets back in the bag that bacteria is rehydrated and you just have you know all the bacteria that would normally be in raw food that you would normally cook so freeze dried is already going to be something that I'm a little bit concerned about because it's raw and people that are immunocompromised children um, just anybody in general has to be really careful the bowls have to be cleaned regularly every single meal bowls have to be clean hands have to be washed um all that stuff because it's just like raw food basically sitting on your counter for you know in a bag for however long it takes you to get through it so every single day more bacteria more bacteria more bacteria okay there we go uh we go and we want to check out the uh guaranteed analysis because this is going to be where it tells us exactly what percentage of the key nutrients are going to be contained in this diet and do they match up with the standards that we know are uh, appropriate and we get those standards if you watch our previous video we get those standards from um, a veterinary textbook I'll link it down below I'll show you a picture and you can go research those standards for yourself but for ease of use I have compiled them into these little charts and we will do a side-by-side -side using that chart all right so here's the side-by-side -side comparison um, we're not going to focus on the metabolizable energy. This chart is based on the guaranteed analysis. And so crude po protein for cats must be 45%, and that is fine. It is in the standards, the upper end of the standards. This does say a minimum, so it is probably or could be more than that. Crude fat at 15%, that is good. Fiber at 3%, it should be less than 5 That is good. We've got phosphorus at 360 cent. 360 sand milligrams per 100 k cows. That is not giving us a percentage. Um, let's see, does that mean? Hmm. That's an interesting question. Let's divide by 100. So it's 3.67 milligrams per k cow. We have to convert. Well, let's. No. Hmm. Let's not do that. We have to move Let's the divide. decimal over three times. Zero, three, six, seven. Question. The question is, what is the question? The question is, they list the guaranteed analysis, which is in percentages, which is what I'm used to. But then, for whatever reason, they list four items, which are important, but they don't list them in a percentage basis they list them as milligrams per 100 k cows no yes you have a variable that you don't end up yeah i have an unknown it's variable there's not a fixed number of kilocalories per kilogram I can call them and ask them how many. There's a thing that says talk to a human. Save you the trouble. Oh. <laughs> what? They don't uh, actually, or they do not actually provide phone support at this time. Okay, so as it were, um, you cannot convert these numbers here to um, percentages because we do not have the um, total caloric density of the food and my attempts to call the company were futile so we're gonna have to go based on just this information here which seems to be fine uh, let's move to the three bags of fresh food and check out the chicken I did go over with the client um, that sometimes they'll say it's chicken, but it's not 100% chicken. She actually has a shellfish allergy herself and cannot have, um, she can't have any fish or seafood in the diet. And so we did a quick 
evaluation here just to make sure they didn't sneak in any fish or fish meal or any type of product that she might be allergic to and they didn't so it is a purely chicken based diet without any other ingredients so that is a bonus of that um, so that is a bonus the guaranteed analysis on the fresh what they're considering the fresh component of the diet let's look at that all right so again they list some other ingredients we are not going to be able to evaluate because it is not because it is not listed in the units that we require and there's no way to convert them because we do not have all the information needed to convert them and that information is not available if we call the company because the company's not taking calls so crude protein 21.2 percent minimum is going to be deficient crude fat at 8.05 is going to be deficient. Crude fiber at 0.4% max is gonna be fine because it just needs to be less than five. Moisture has to do with the amount of water that's in there. It does not matter to us. Um, and then ash has to do with a completely different um, parameter that again, we're not going to be evaluating. And so this portion of the diet, which is the three bags of fresh food is going to be deficient. If you check the other recipes, they are all gonna be deficient as well. And so with the client, we ran through quite a few of the recipes and not a single one of them met the requirements established by AFCO for cats. So the beef doesn't meet the requirement either. So that is gonna be um, the 50-50 version, which is the version she was actually most interested in. Just for information and seeing if maybe there was another option that would be suitable, we wanna to head to the 100% fresh option. This says it's their healthiest, most moisture packed plan, and it is all human grade fresh in four tasty proteins. And so this is meant to be a complete and balanced diet. It's the 100% fresh, there is no dry component to it. So when you open the recipes to these, you will find that every single one of them, again, is going to be deficient in protein, fat, and fiber. Interesting, interestingly enough, if we rewind and we are paying attention to what they're claiming, they claim that it has amazing amounts of protein. So I'm not sure where that claim is coming from because it is actually deficient in protein. And that is where I segued with this particular client into marketing. Uh, these plans are, meal plans are heavily marketed. And so in veterinary medicine, I think there are two types of marketing. There's good marketing and bad marketing. And when I speak of good marketing and bad marketing, I'm not talking about they do a good job marketing. I'm talking about their motives are good. And so when a company has a very nice bag, a very pretty bag, a very attractive bag, or they have a very diverse portfolio, they have very many options, or they have nice commercials, that's good marketing. Um, it is not deceiving people and capitalizing on things that people want to hear but do not necessarily provide nutrition for a pet. And so when a company um, produces a food that is freeze dried raw or has a raw component or doesn't meet any of the requirements as set aside by AFCO that we know to be the appropriate parameters for pets and the healthiest parameters of pets, the question becomes why are they making it? Well, they're not making it because they think it's healthier. They're making it because they think that people will buy it. And so that is bad marketing. They're using marketing to promote a product that is not supported or, or promoted by the veterinary community, and they're doing that just to make money. So there's nothing wrong with a company having a very wide portfolio and offering a lot of varieties and having nice bags and having cute commercials if the product they're selling is nutritious. So it is very important, and I think probably the gold nugget to this whole video is pay attention to the marketing, and is a company promoting good marketing or bad marketing? And are they promoting honest marketing, or are they promoting dishonest marketing? And so for this particular food, Smalls, I don't think it's appropriate. It's not appropriate because it's raw. 
it's not appropriate because it doesn't meet any of the parameters and in my opinion it's not appropriate because they're using marketing that is directed at selling a product versus um, promoting a product that is healthy and nutritious so that is that for today i hope you guys enjoyed if you have questions leave them down below a lot of you have already asked me about some other diets and i'm working on researching those and hope to get some of those videos to you real soon all right see you later guys bye yeah we're gonna need a legal size pad for this because i'm gonna tell you this is just getting i don't need a bigger piece of paper this isn't gonna do it it's way too much math in this video.